Football is a physical game, and I know firsthand what it's like to take a hit. I always thought of myself as a reasonably tough dude for staying in the game after these type of hits. But after I read the story about Jack Youngblood, I can't say the same. Anyways, this story is pretty crazy. I hope you guys enjoy it. In the mid to late 20th century, the NFL was a tough guy league. Some of the most intimidating figures in all of sports roam the gridiron. But I don't know if there's anyone tougher than Jack Youngblood. Just the name itself is tough. This is one of my favorite NFL stories of all time. So a lot of people talk about Brett Favre's 297 games in a row as one of the truest forms of toughness the league has ever seen. But who knew a 201 game streak by Jack Youngblood would actually be more impressive? The dude played in every single game of his 14 year career except for one. As a defensive end for the LA Rams, Jack Youngblood was a special player. He's a Hall of Famer and he was the captain of the Rams during the late 70s and early 80s. He was one incredible leader, but his toughness is what sets him apart. Throughout his career, he dealt with his fair share of health problems. So before I get into the main story, I want to talk about something that happened late in his career. Before the 1981 season, during off-season practices, he started having major problems in his arm. Couldn't bend my fingers, couldn't put my, couldn't put my watch on, things like that. There were indications that something might not be quite right. So I, so I go in, the trainer looks at it, he almost faints. So at that, I'm saying to myself, something is bad wrong here. He jumps on the phone, they call the doctors, one thing leads to another. I'm in the hospital that evening. And when he was in the emergency room, the doctors ended up removing a blood clot the size of a hot dog. A freaking hot dog. They told Youngblood there was a chance he would never play football again. And those who knew him scoffed at that remark. They said, Remember 79? 1979, NFC Divisional Playoff Game. This is where Jack Youngblood's story turns to legend. The LA Rams were facing off against Tom Landry's dominant Cowboys, the reigning Super Bowl champs. It was going to be pretty tough to pull off this victory. They were going to have to play pretty much perfect. So in the first half, Youngblood is being blocked by this dude. He rips to the right and gets past him. The lineman immediately goes down while his teammate pushes Youngblood to the ground. You can't really see it, but when Jack falls, he lands right on his lower leg, which ended up breaking his fibula. You can just see how much pain he's in. He said it felt like a knife was stabbing him every step he took. And after doing a little bit of research, a fibula bears about 17% of your body weight. It also controls some of your ankle stability. So if it's fractured, you can put some weight on it, but you'll have limited ability moving around and it'll be exceptionally painful. And it is highly recommended to stay on crutches for at least six weeks. And that's after being surgically repaired. And at the very least, you should be wearing a boot with limited walking so you don't do any further damage. The doctors are all looking at it and they're feeling it and they're going, no, 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 you can't do this. I said, tape the thing up and we'll worry about it when the game's over. Win, lose, or draw, then that's the time to worry about it. You can't worry about it now. I can still walk on it and still run. Tape it up, give me two more aspirin, and let's go play. Yeah, so tape and two aspirin. And Jack was back. You know, I don't know if they gave him aspirin or something a little stronger, but nonetheless, the man was back on the field with a fractured bone in his leg. And it wasn't like he was bad when he was out there. Maybe from his sheer grit and willpower, the Rams ended up winning the game and advancing to the NFC Championship. Pretty crazy, right? He finished that game on a broken leg. Well, it only gets crazier because it doesn't end there. He ends up practicing all the next week and playing in the NFC Championship. Then the Rams won again, and he played in the Super Bowl. That's three straight weeks of playing on a broken leg. Then how about this? He played in the Pro Bowl the week after the Super Bowl. I mean, there's dudes sitting out of the Pro Bowl just because they don't want to play nowadays. And this dude played on a broken leg. Honestly, I don't know how I even feel about this. I can't tell if he's the toughest dude ever or the most insane. I mean, just look at that guy. So after he retired years later in 2013, Jack was interviewed about how he felt about injuries. 
The specific question was about Jason Pierre-Paul and if he should sit out and heal up. And Jack said, go play. It's not about you. It's about your football team. And when he was asked if he would understand why Pierre-Paul might want to sit out and let himself get healthy, he said he couldn't grasp that. No, Youngblood said, I would not understand because I'd want to see him go try. Now, I can see what the man's saying, especially as the team's captain and being the emotional leader on the field at all times, but come on, risking everything like that? Let's just say the same situation comes up today. A guy breaks his leg on defense and then comes back in the game. What if he gets hit there again and completely shatters the bone or causes more damage to the point where it can't be fixed? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Whatever the right decision is, Jack Youngblood playing on a broken leg will always be remembered as one of the gutsiest performances of all time. That's the kind of guy I want leading my defense. 